The expressed views, statements, and opinions by the guests on the Risk Advisor program made either during the show or on the corresponding social media and blog outlets are not necessarily the view or opinions of Baxter Productions, Inc. or any of its affiliates, associates, or others who are part of this production. Information provided during this broadcast is for news purposes only and does not constitute a remedy for any of the discussed risks presented. Did you ever wonder about home automation systems spying on you? Are the cameras and the systems we put into our homes protect us or actually hurt us? We're going to find out today on theriskadvisor.com. The Risk Advisor. You're listening to The Risk Advisor Vodcast. The Risk Advisor highlights topics about the most important personal security and safety issues today. This is for you, your family, and your loved ones. Experts alert to trends, tactics, and techniques used against us. You can be more aware and more informed to stay safe in this ever-changing, complicated place we call life. And now your host, media's go-to guy, Sal LaFriere. Welcome to theriskadvisor.com. We're here today with Sam Panchel from Silent Guardian Systems, and we want to talk about systems that you put into your home and the automation and the risk that they present. Sam, welcome to the show. Hey, Sal. How are you? Good to be here. So, obviously, you're the expert in the show in, you know, in risk for home automation. Give us a little bit about your background. So, as you said, Sal, uh, I'm retired from the NYPD. I uh, did over 20 years in law enforcement, with majority of it in the technical side of law enforcement. Uh, some of my duties included working on barricaded hostage situations, wiretapping, uh, installing covert audio and video for investigations throughout New York and other states as well. Okay. Talk to us about home automation systems. We see a lot about this today. We th- there are a lot of things, it seems, it appears there are a lot of things that these systems can do. Talk us through a little bit of automation. Well, one of the most important questions uh, the end user needs to ask themselves is what are their goals are at the end of the installation? What is it they're looking to automate? So automation means a lot of different things to many people, but in our industry is giving you the ability to either control your shades, the music, the lighting, the door locks, the alarm remotely or within your home from not going to those switches or those keypads. So it used to be, you know, the big thing was, you know, with the shades and all of that, and, you know, maybe a TV would pop out of a credenza or something like that. But today we can actually install locks that see the, the front, your front door lock. We can actually can control that. Th- that is correct. Um, so you have the ability now to use a mobile device, whether it's your phone, um, any type of a tablet, where you log into different apps that have been installed on these devices that give you the ability to open up the front door if you have someone coming in and you don't want to give them a key or access code you could lock the door you could turn the alarm on you could turn the alarm off you also have the ability to control the temperature in your house you may be on vacation you may be away um, in the winter time and you have the heat set a little bit higher or lower than you normally would but you want it to be warm or cool when you get home you can log in through your phone, turn that temperature higher, lower, uh, turn the lights on, give the appearance that you're home, even though you're not, by turning different lights on and off remotely from outside your residence. So what are some of the factors if I'm contemplating turning my home into this automation center? What are some, what are some of the things I should be considering? Um, depending on the system you want to use. The prices may vary where you have the ability uh, to do some of the stuff yourself. Obviously, you'll save yourself some money. Uh, Depends how handy you are and technical you are. Uh, Most of the stuff that's out there in the market for the do-it-yourself or self-explanatory typically, you know, involves you downloading an app. In the obvious, you must have internet with Wi-Fi for 99% of these products. And it walks you through it. Um, But you need to really decide and understand what is it you want to do. What happens is that, that's a, just an aside, as you were saying that, I was just thinking, what happens when Wi-Fi goes down? So you, you need a relatively stable Wi-Fi connection, or does it, re, does it reset itself? Uh, so the Wi-Fi is very important for you for the remote aspect of it. It's not so much of the operational. So say, for instance, you had a, um, a wireless control thermostat and your internet went down in the house. 
It doesn't mean that the, the thermostat stops working. It just means that you don't have the ability to control it or monitor it remotely. So there is a fail safe in, 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 in these products that are available on the market today so that if the Wi-Fi does go down, it doesn't totally kill your system. So you decide you want to automate the house. Next step, try and figure out, you know, what do I want it to do? That is correct. So uh, one of the so don't run out and buy a system first and then try and apply it, figure out correct. what you want it to do. You should really sit down, um, you know, whether you're with a significant other and family and kids and figure out what uh, works for you uh, and your family. Um, you know, and the thing that you hit on before, it's very important that you have stable internet in the house, um, and you would have to speak to your local provider for that. Um, and you also want to make sure you're using a Wi-Fi system or a wireless router that has the ability um, to sustain what you're looking to do and control. You don't want to have weak signals. It's going to cause problems uh, with the equipment um, if you don't have a strong Wi-Fi system. And that's the one where you normally see, you know, multiple antennas off of a larger box, and it normally runs a little bit more expensive than the, you know, the little square. Yes. Um, so that that's the typical look today. Uh, they come in all different shapes and sizes. Um, one of the companies that we install and, and actually love their product is a company called Eero. Um, it's a phenomenal product. Uh, we find it to be extremely stable. Uh, has all the security features that we need uh, in, in embedded into the product. And, and they work very well. And it's a modular system, uh, works on what we call a mesh. So you have one name of a Wi-Fi system in your home, and they all talk to one another. You're not connecting to one Wi-Fi to turn off because you're in your bedroom and you get a weak signal. It all works, gels together very well. So a person who's not technically savvy, how difficult is it for somebody to set these up on their own? So um, it really isn't very hard at all. Um, believe it or not, it's very intuitive. Um, a lot of the products today come with uh, a very, very uh, intuitive application. So just to talk about the Wi-Fi setup, it's simple. You plug in the one plug goes into your modem or existing router. It plugs into the main unit of the, the base unit. And then everything else is controlled via the app on your phone. And it walks you right through it. If it's having any type of trouble or issues, there's always a 1-800 number. You can always call. Um, nine out of ten times, there really isn't an issue. And it's, it's fairly, fairly easy as long as you're not looking to go crazy with integration and automation. And that's obviously where you guys would come in to have somebody be able to sit down, understand it, figure out what you want to do. Correct. Do you find that you wind up getting called more for the planning stage or do you get more involved in the, the actual installations? Um, typically, we will get calls for people looking for advice and a recommendation on what we think or what we are seeing in the industry that may be fitting their their, uh, their their lifestyle of what they're looking to do. But most times it's on the installation aspect of it. Uh, the homeowner may try to install the product, run into a jam or not have the patience or have, you know, it could be a bad product. You know, there are times things come out brand new out of the box that don't work and oftentimes the homeowner may get frustrated and say hey you know what let me just hire a professional who does this for a living and uh, that's where we typically come in and we had talked pre-production about when you buy something online make sure that it comes in a box that's you know sealed it's it's a brand new device it's not something that's been uh, it's already been used or, or open that's correct uh, we always recommend buying any products that you may want to purchase for your residents um, to always buy it from a reputable company. A lot of guys are selling used equipment online. Uh, there's various sites that you could buy, go and buy products. Um, the, the, one of the pitfalls that you have is when you buy a used product or box, open box item that it's not coming from a reputable retailer is that device may have been tampered with. And what we try to prevent is someone from already manipulating the, the the software that's within that device for their own use. In other words, they've already opened up that device, they've planted some type of uh, spyware in it, whether it's a thermostat or wireless doorbell, and I'll sell it to you and you put it in your residence and now I have the ability to spy on you. In the minute we have left, people, some people are afraid of home automation because of that reason that they're gonna wind up getting bugged, they're gonna bug themselves. How much information is really at risk with these systems if you don't follow those guidelines? So number one, always, always, always change the default username and password to anything that you're installing. So with that being said, it depends on the product you have. And obviously, if you have a video camera in there, 
uh, surveillance type of device, uh, you, you, you have the vulnerability for someone to eavesdrop and as well as listen and watch and see what you, what's going on within your, your space. Uh, the thermostats, they can mess with you, uh, turn on the heat in the summer, and turn on the, the AC in the winter, you know, s little goofy things. But, you know, at the end of the day, nothing is 100% fail safe or, or secure. You have to figure out what works for you. Okay. When we come back, we're going to talk about just what some of those more specific risks are to the home automation system. We'll be right back. Workplace violence, terrorism, identity theft, cyberbullying, and stalking. It's not a matter of if they will happen, it's a matter of when. The security world is too complicated to do it alone. You need a security advisor. Call Protective Countermeasures now. Protective Countermeasures has been providing security consulting to Fortune 500 companies for nearly 20 years. Call today, 914-576-8706, protectivecountermeasures.com. You're watching theriskadvisor.com. I'd like to remind you that if you or someone you know would be a great guest or have a topic that you would like for us to cover, please reach out to us via our website, theriskadvisor.com. And we're back with Sam, and we're talking about home automation risks. Sam, you know, one of the things we had talked about you know, at the end of the last thing was looking at the risks. I guess you really have to figure out way what the risks are as to what you want in home automation right i mean do you do you want to be able to just control your thermostat or do you really want to go hog, you know, hog wild on automation and obviously that exposes you to a bigger risk how do you make that adjustment so it, it all depends on the individual cell you know like we uh, we're saying earlier, it's what you're looking to do, what's causing you uh, or the need to add these products, right? So if we talk a little bit about lighting controls, right? So you have the ability to install devices. Uh, there's a thousand different manufacturers on the market today that all have mobile apps that give you the ability to turn lights on and off. So if that is hacked, what's really the risk? They're going to turn lights on, turn lights off. Then you get involved with video surveillance, right? So all these Wi-Fi cameras and stuff that are out there, there's a more of a risk in my opinion there. One, who really wants to be looked at when they're in their home? Who well, that was the whole thing with nanny cams, right? People would yes. put the, nan the first versions of the nanny cams, where they, would be put, they would put them in, they would forget that they had them. Right. And then all of a sudden, some neighbor would be hacking into it, and you know, now you're no longer watching the baby, but you're watching the parents in bed. Right. So, you know, that, that's still out there. Uh, unfortunately, the world we live in today, there's vulnerabilities, and there's a need uh, for people to spy on other people, and it does happen. Um, that's where we talk a little bit more. We like to really tell our clients um, to lock down their Wi-Fi. You know, um, I come over your house for a dinner party. I say to you, hey, Sal, what is your... Uh, your, your uh, password for your Wi-Fi, and you give it to me, unassumingly, right? And I just want to get on the Internet. You've just opened the door for me to now do multiple things to you, right? I could now possibly spy on your cameras. If you didn't change the, the default username and password, I could possibly get in there. I could get into your, your music. If you have some type of music streaming module, I could come by your house at 2 in the morning, log into internal speakers out and jump you out of bed. I could mess with your lights. I could mess with your thermostat. So, you know, when you're setting up um, a wireless Internet, you should really try to use a professional because that's when you start to get involved with your main network, your guest network. If someone comes over, you don't give them the username and password to your main network. You give them the username and password to your guest network, which has a partition in it. doesn't allow me to see a lot of the services or things that are plugged into your network. So we always recommend to hire a professional to set up your, your, your wireless for you so you know that that's not going on. You know, There's a lot of different games that people can play, you know, depending on the vulnerability and the target that you are. You know, I could sit in front of your house with a mobile Wi-Fi unit, and I knew when I came over, I came by your house, I noticed that you named your Wi-Fi Sal's house. We always also recommend not to name it Johnny Jones's Wi-Fi. You name it something obscure, maybe your pad or a football team or a baseball team, something that really doesn't come back to you. So I could drive by your house, I see Sal's home network, I park in front of your house, and I leave a, a wireless router in there with broadcasting the same name, hoping that you try to come in and log in. If it doesn't auto-detect itself and you log in, you're going to give me your username because when you go to log in, I'm going to capture that information. Now I have your access to your wireless internet. And that comes back to the same potential issues of gaining access to your network, creating things that 
don't need to be creative for as eavesdropping and, and listening and messing with your products. So we've come a long way from the guy that would run around with uh, with a garage door opener and leave it on Scanner. the on the and just you know press the button and figure yes. that people wouldn't reset the password in the in the device, and they'd go around and that's how they would get into your home. So we one step up from that, but basically it's the same thing. Yeah, we recommend you know it sounds like it's a, a pain in the butt to constantly changing your username password, but we always recommend uh, oftenly often changing the username, the password to your network, changing the SSID, which is the name of your network, uh, using special characters and things of that nature, and you know, creating that partition between guests and your main network to avoid any problems. So for the people that actually do have home automation systems where your door will unlock and the alarms will be turned off, you gotta hear this story. We talked about this in pre-pro, about using Alexa and how they, the methods that they're using to gain access. Yeah, so we we've uh, have dealt with numerous people, you know, with this issue. Um, so what was going on is one t- particular case that we're working on. Um, we had the homeowner that had a uh, one of these streaming boxes, you know, uh, like a uh, an Alexa and or a Google Home. And what the bad guys were doing is they'd find your phone number online, come to your house, pick up the phone, and call your home phone. They hear your phone ring, they hear the voicemail come on, and they'll go, hello, 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 and they hear their voice because it's enunciating through the through the, the voicemail. Then what they do is, hoping that you have one of these products in your house, they'll call back again, and when the phone machine answers, they'll say, hey, Google, turn off the alarm. Hey, Alexa, open the front door, whatever products you have, and just taking a shot at it and see what happens. And sometimes it works because it doesn't know the difference between voices at the moment. And obviously it's always listening. So when you tell it to do something, it's going to, it's going to follow along. As long as it can hear you clearly, it's going to follow along. That's correct. So as long as there's some type of integration, you have uh, these home pods integrated to locks and lighting, you know, Hey, play uh, this radio station or turn on my lights at two in the morning. You know, it, these are things that are the vulnerabilities are out there. Um, obviously, things are evolving quickly and things are getting better. But these are one of the things that we had just run into most recently. So clearly, if you're going to get into the home automation where you're going to with the locks and the alarms and you're going to get into some level of sophistication, you're way better off to hire a professional that knows what they're doing, not to have somebody come in and try and do this yourself because there's just so many opportunities for you to get in trouble. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the things that we also talk about is making sure that the professional that you've hired to do the install is one, a reputable company, and two, they turn over all the administrative username and passwords for all the products that they have installed. You don't want to run into a situation where the professional put the equipment in, but he, he or she still obtains a username and password and they're now logging into your system. And because ultimately what they could wind up doing is just going on to your video, if they, especially if you have video cameras that are installed, what they'll do is they'll go on your video system and be able to watch everything that you have cameras on. That's correct. They're and seeing what you're seeing, yeah. essentially. And, and you, you would know. never know it. Um, unless you went into the logs and did some investigative work, you, theoretically you wouldn't know it, but on looking at it face value, it can go undetected. I can believe that. Okay, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more with Sam about the technologies that are being deployed in controlling these risks. We'll be right back. From the files of New York detective Frank Santasola, a riveting murder mystery novel, The Garbage Murders. After an illicit liaison with his mistress, the owner of a private sanitation company in New York is murdered. Enter the life of Detective Frank Miranda, one of a few men in law enforcement to infiltrate the Italian mob and bring to justice some of the biggest names in organized crime history on Amazon Books in paperback and Kindle editions. TheGarbageMurders.com If you have a question or comment, please write to us on our website or join us on our social media. You can find all of our social media links on our website at TheRiskAdvisor.com. So, Sam, let, let's talk a little bit about passwords. And, you know, people seem to have a problem trying to develop passwords and use them. So let's talk a little bit about that. So um, passwords, obviously, are very important. Um, you need to protect whatever your is password protected for that reason. Um, so talking a little bit about Wi-Fi, people need to understand there's a difference between 
the Wi-Fi username and password and the administrative username and password. Typically, if you have a local carrier that's uh, providing you your internet, they give you a modem or r modem router combo. And if you look on the side or the bottom of that device, it typically has a sticker on it. And that sticker will tell you what the SSID is or the name of your wireless network. It'll give you the password and it'll also give you a password which is for the administrative. The administrative password uh, should always, always be changed. Uh, the reason why is once you get into the router's administration, you can get into all the settings and get involved with uh, port forwarding and rules and things that are within uh, the router and the modem. So we always recommend to change that at the minimum. And then they provide you sometimes uh, with a pre-labeled pre username password for your Wi-Fi, we also recommend to change that. Because then you can walk into your house if your router is accessible, depending on how your home is set up. Sometimes people have it sitting on the on, on side of their television. I just walk over and I can take a quick snapshot of your username and password uh, for the wireless as well as the administrative, and I could cause you some headaches. You know, so we always recommend uh, the default username and passwords must be changed. And identifying passwords or coming up with the password. Yeah, we always recommend the obvious. Uh, don't use the same password for every single one of your 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 protection levels always try to change it you know not use the obvious birth dates husband wives names kids names pets name you know try to be a little bit unique um, i know one of the things we always recommend is to our clients is when you got to come up with a password take a phrase something that you like something like a phrase from a movie or a line from a movie you know go ahead make my day or anything like that and use the first letter of each word yeah, that's that's a good idea. But what often we we come across this question is like, I got password for this, a password for that, and they, people start to you know, mm -hmm. they also have these uh, I, uh, apps that you can put on your phone that save your password, you know, your notes. But you also got to make sure that your phone is also protected, right? Whether you have some type of uh, a key, uh, a digit, or a swipe, or thumb, or face recognition. You know, we live on our phones, right? And a lot of times we'll store that information within our phone. So you have to be cognizant of the fact of, hey, if you lose your phone and it's not backed up, you know, that's a whole other episode we can talk about. Uh, but you, you have to be mindful of that, you sure. know, of, of the information that's in your cell phone. And we carry our world in our phones today. And, and the risk, again, going back to the home automation side of it, is that if you're not smart in what you're doing, then what's going to happen is you're going to allow yourself to be bugged. You know, you, you're going to allow somebody in so they don't have to worry about coming in and planting a device. You're planting the device for them. Th that is correct. Um, it's the obvious. You put it in, you feel secure about it. But the reality is if it's not set up right and put in the right way, is a potential harmfulness in that. So I'm going to – something I didn't ask you before, but I know the answer. Uh, you use home automation you're comfortable with it so it's not something that people should run away from but they just need to be smart about it that is correct it's 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 a great product and the way the world is moving uh with auto automation it's phenomenal i have the ability to log into my home and make sure my kids didn't leave every light on in the house i could shut that off i could make sure hey i want to you know see what's going on with the temperature i want to see if my kids are home or not these wireless doorbells they're great I know when my son gets home. I know when my daughter gets home. I'm able to, to use today's technology to m give me a peace of mind, but I also know what the vulnerabilities are, and we try to protect ourselves from that. All right, so that's a serious answer. Now the other part about the home automation. So when the kids are growing up, you can cut off their internet. <laughs> well, that's one of the great things about the Eero product. Um, you know, getting, getting into a little bit more uh, security as far as Wi-Fi, that app gives you the ability to see what devices are connected to your network. And it should be checked often. You know what? I know that I have four smart TVs, four music streaming modules, a wireless doorbell, and two thermostats, and I have it a phone. I should be able to look on my app and tell you what devices are connected. That's a great tool that's built into this, this application. And it's also something that if you're checking it, you, would, you know what's on. So if you that's have correct. nine, ten devices on it, and all of a sudden an 11th device pops up, Right. It's a great way for you to be able to check your network. That is correct. Uh, it's a real effective tool. And the other side of that is when the kids don't listen, you can't beat them anymore, so we shut their internet <laughs> off. <laughs> Talk to me a little bit about the company, what you guys are doing, uh, what, your, what your services are, 
So Silent Guardian Security is a uh, full-service security company. Um, we do anything in the realm of low voltage, uh, whether it's cameras, alarm, access control, TVs, um, anything in that space, integration, automation, Wi-Fi networks, um, anything that um, is what everyone's using at home today. Yeah. So real quick, a couple of minutes left, just a quick recap of all of this. The key thing on home automation is administrative passwords. Yeah. Well, first of all, identifying what you want to do, right? Okay. What, what is it that you want to automate, right? I don't care about my shades, but I care about my thermostat. I don't care about my cameras, but I care about my lighting. So, right, sit down and say, hey, what is it that I want to do? And then from there, start building it that way, right? Simple things that you might think that are, you know, difficult to do are going to be real, real easy for you. These apps are phenomenal, Sal. They walk you through it. You log in. It tells you, you know, you have to have, like, your username and password for your wireless network. It walks you through. It's super, super intuitive and, and pretty easy to install. And when you're and when you're doing all of that and you're setting it up, you figure out what you want to do. You go out, you get the devices that are going to be able to do what you want it to do. Then yes. the first thing, set it up. Make sure that you have administrative passwords. That's correct. Second thing you said was go to a reputable company. Yes, we we want to make sure that the the products that are being put in are your products and you're actually in control of them, not leaving uh, any administrative. Uh, usernames and password to the to the professional that installed it. We want to make sure everything's done right. Number one, number two, you're the keeper of the the passwords. And then, third thing to keep in mind is the danger in microphones that may be built into devices. That is correct. Uh, a lot of the stuff that's on the market today um, have audio and video combination of them both. Um, you know, you may have a camera that's installed that looks like a camera but has audio in it, and the installer may have not told you about it. You know, and if they have the access to your, your camera system, they can now not only see you but listen to you. And that's why it becomes important to getting somebody that's reputable that you can Absolutely. actually, that you can rely on. Absolutely. And, you know, as well as knowing the product and looking at the app and playing around yourself, you know, you might go in the app and say, hey, what's this audio button? And hit the button, all of a sudden you hear yourself talking in the room. You know, it's always good to play with these things as long as you don't get into the settings and mess with them in that sense. These Little applications for audio and stuff are all on on the app, and you could toggle them on and off without messing with any administration. That's great. Uh, Sam, thank you for coming in from thank Silent you. Guardian Security. Uh, we'd like to remind you, if you have a question or a comment, please feel free to write to us at guest at theriskadvisor.com. You should follow us on our social media accounts. We'd love for you to go and sign up and join us in social media. You could find that at the riskadvisor.com website. I'd like to thanks again for watching, and I hope that you tune in next week. We hope you enjoyed this show. If you have any questions, would like to appear on the program, or recommend a guest, contact us at theriskadvisor.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. View and listen to us on iTunes, iHeartRadio, YouTube, and Roku TV. Tune in live on various local radio stations. Find links to all of these and listen to past shows at theriskadvisor.com. Thank you for listening. Stay safe and join us again next week for another episode of The Risk Advisor.